हेलो गाइस दिस इज अदिप वेलकम टू माय चैनल मोमेंट साइंस वेयर आई सिंपलीफाई बायोमैकेनिक्स एंड आल्सो लॉट ऑफ ऑर्थो टॉपिक्स विद जो सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग आल्सो चेक मी आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वेयर आई पोस्ट डेली एमसीक्यूज एंड आल्सो पिक्चर्स ऑफ माय नोट्स द रेफरेंस टाइम फॉर ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विल बी मेंशन डाउन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो चेक दैट आउट एंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड In this video we are going to talk about the distal articulation of the hip joint. We will look at the structure and then we will look at the two angles that are described under this topic. So to start with the distal articulation is a rounded head and 2/3 of the sphere covers up the surface area, right? Then there is this area called as the fovea capitis where there is no cartilage and there is attachment of the ligament. Which ligament? I write it down over here. teres okay so there is the teres ligament which attaches from here to your acetabulum right so there is the acetabulum this is the head and the head is attached to the acetabulum by this ligament through which there are many blood vessels which also pass and supply your head of the femur then also this neck is there which is around 5 cm long and is angled superiorly so this is the neck which is angled superiorly it is on the medial side like this on the medial side and then slightly anteriorly okay so these are some basics that we have covered now let's look at the angles so there are two angles there is angle of inclination and angle of torsion in simple words if you want to understand angle of inclination see if this is your femur right this is your neck and this is the head angle of inclination is basically how much your neck is inclined upward so that is your angle of inclination and angle of torsion is basically now if you look at the femur from top how much this neck is twisted forward or backward that is your angle of torsion okay so as simple as that but life is not always that simple and we'll have to look at the ranges that they are they cover and also some other points under these angles so let's look at that so first let's start with angle of inclination the average value is around 126 degree and it can range from around 115 to 140 degrees these values are very important for your mcq then going to the next point women have lesser angle due to their wider pelvis okay so that is something you can keep in mind that angle of inclination will be always lesser for women and this angle also reduces with age so if you look at the femur like this the weight is coming from top right and so as your age increases due to the weight bearing your angle of inclination which was uh, earlier which way higher it will keep reducing like this because of the weight right so that is another point and this increase in angle of inclination pathological increase is called as coxa valga that is basically increase in the medial angle right medial is always valgus so coxa valga and if there is reduction in the angle of inclination it is called as coxa vera okay so that is under angle of inclination now going to angle of torsion so talking about angle of torsion we already know what it is but we need to put it in words right the definition is very important so whenever we are describing any angle we always talk about two lines that form the angle right so over here also we do the same so angle is formed by the axis that is passing through femoral head and neck and the axis passing through femoral condyle now let's look at this so you take your femur and this is your head and this is your neck right so first axis is this one that is passing through femoral head and neck and the second axis is your femoral condyles are over here right so this is the second line so basically this line and this line so angle that is formed by these two lines over here like this right because it's there is torsion right torsion of your femoral head and neck so this is the angle that is formed so if it's anteriorly it is called as anteversion and if it's posteriorly it's called as retroversion right so that's pretty simple then going to the next point angle of torsion reduces with age and in children if it's 40 degrees in adults it can become up to 10 to 20 degrees however there is no fixed range of abnormal angle of torsion okay but what was seen was in hip dysplasia 
द एंगल ऑफ अराउंड फोर्टी टू डिग्री प्लस और माइनस सिक्सटीन डिग्रीज वॉज नोटिस्ड सो दैट इज समवेयर यू कैन कंसिडर एज अ पैथोलॉजिकल एंगल एंड इन चिल्ड्रन एंगल्स मोर देन थर्टी डिग्रीज वॉज सीन इन सी पी चिल्ड्रन ओके सो दैट्स वेयर यू कैन ड्रॉ अ ब्लर लाइन फॉर एबनॉर्मल एंगल ऑफ टॉर्शन सो दैट वॉज अबाउट टॉर्शन अनादर इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट आई वुड लाइक टू एड ओवर हियर इज how this angle of torsion is formed in the first place so that's where how our development happens in the womb comes into play so basically if you look at jo i'll use jo as the model to demonstrate how this torsion occurs so this is your body in the womb and from here your upper limb and your lower limb start coming or developing and at around 8 weeks uh, whatever you see right the normal fetus position that we see right like this is not always present from the start so when you are born uh, and when your limbs have started to form they always form in this direction something like this okay so this is how you you are born like this and then at around 8 weeks your lower limbs they start going for a torsion and that's when your femoral torsion occurs so basically your Uh, foot was which was like this it starts going for torsion and this is where your fetus position is formed at around 8 weeks and this is where the torsion of your femur occurs and if you notice your when this movement is occurring your head and neck of the femur is pretty stable right and your distal femur is moving but whenever we are checking the angle of torsion over here what do we do we take the condyles as the stable reference point and then we check the angle of your femoral neck how it is moving so it's exactly the opposite that we do that is basically when we are born your neck and the head of the femur is always constant and the distal part of your femur is moving but when we are checking we actually take the condyles as a stable part and the neck and the head as moving parts so that is something i found interesting so i thought i'll tell you guys but uh, not necessary to keep in mind as such but it's an interesting fact then going to the last part that is the articular congruence here we will be talking about the frog leg position which is an important position very important position and these three components are very important that is flexion abduction and lateral rotation this position is used in children with congenital hip dislocation it is a very effective way to get the head of the femur in contact with your acetabulum the maximum amount of contact of femur the head of the femur with the acetabulum occurs in this position okay so that is basically your flexion then abduction and lateral rotation right so this is the position that we are talking about and this position is similar to your quadruped position so this is an important position that you need to keep in mind and talking about the non weight bearing positions in non weight bearing position your hip functions as a very incongruent joint because of its big head and smaller acetabulum okay so this is compensated by your partial vacuum which is created by your acetabular fossa so is similar to shoulder joint where we talked about the vacuum that was created at the glenoid to hold the humerus in similar manner over here also there is a partial vacuum that is created to give stability to your less congruent or incongruent hip joint so with that we finish off the topic so what did we talk about we talked about the distal articulation we talked about the head there was the fovea capitis which was attached to your acetabulum by the teres ligament where there was no articular surface then we covered two angles the inclination and torsion and then finally we talked about the articular congruence where the frog leg position that is flexion abduction and lateral rotation this position of the hip is used in congenital hip dislocations so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends and don't forget to hit that like button and some comments so that i can get some feedback regarding what other topics i can make also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and see you soon in the next video